all about the basics, about the basics. No trouble, I'm all about the ba 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 basics in clogging. Hey friends, I'm Rachel and welcome to Clog for Life. Today I wanted to prove to you that the basic clogging step is anything but basic. The way I see it, the basic step obviously is the foundation for what makes clogging clogging and it's usually the very first thing we ever learn. It gets such a bum rap because when done poorly and in a boring way, yeah, it's boring. But I'm going to prove to you today that there are so many variations of the basic that you can really get your use out of this thing. You'll see that done in these different ways, it will help lend itself a little bit better to different speeds of music, to different styles of music or different styles of your performance. So I wanted to go over with you today a few different ways that you can tweak your basic, improve its look and sound obviously, but kind of modify the way that it looks and feels depending on your choreography. I think of basics kind of like I do the seven dwarves. There's so many different ones, they deserve names. So we have boring, never want to do that one, bendy, clicky, draggy, bucky, Canadian, and Irish. I'm going to go over with you each one of these variations. You may or may not recognize them even as basics, but they are basic forms and you can use these in different ways throughout your choreography. Let's dig into it. So before we get into all the different kinds of basics and what makes them awesome, let's first talk about the basic basic and what can make it super boring and awful to watch. Well, let's give an example. A boring basic is very robotic and stiff. But as uh, we get more acclimated to it, as our muscles start developing strength and some of the memory, we can start um, smoothing things out. They don't have to look so robotic. A better basic will start to come closer, a little more natural. Your doubles start to come back in towards the center. They're a little flappier, a little faster, a little sharper. And you might start to get more of an up and down action as opposed to this Frankenstein rocking thing. Okay. okay. That brings me to my first variation. We're talking about a bendier and bouncier basic. When you start to get more comfortable, you're going to start bending your knees more. And this is actually one of the very, very, very first things that I start teaching in how to clog is how to bend. This is important because at this stage, this is where this is going to come into play. When you are bending, you're getting a nice dynamic up and down motion. You can see that nice little bounce that happens. It's all here in the knees. But just practice um, putting your weight on one leg and just bending, okay? Up and down, up and down, because that's what's carrying you through these movements. And we're going to use this as we get along here. So this bending part is super important not to be overlooked. Get those knees strong, okay? Your quads, really. So a bendy basic also is kind of bouncy. They go hand in hand. Double step, rock. When I double step and I bend down, both knees are bending, right? When I'm going to rock back, right, both of my legs are straightening. And when I come back down, they're bent again. So double step, rock step. Notice my knees are bending at the same time, bending and straightening at the same time. And it is that dramatic bending and straightening action that is making this look happen. And down the road, it'll actually be the source of the sound that we want to achieve in some of the other 
uh, little variations that I'm going to show you. So now you have a basic that is much more dynamic. And part B of this, you have a song where it's fast, okay? But when the song slows down, you have the luxury to be able to bounce more, drag your movements out, and make it look a little different. So as an example, okay, so that was all in the bending, the bending and straightening, and I hope you can see the subtle difference of the bending versus that is a variation, basically number one slash two, the bendy and bouncy basic, and it all comes from bending those knees. Ooh, now we're gonna talk about one of my favorite clogging dwarfs, Bucky. <laughs> there is actually a whole nother sub style of clogging called buck dancing. It is a little different. I won't get into it a whole lot right now, but there are little subtleties, little pitter patters that happen in buck dancing that we can bring over to the clogging world. Regular basic being buck will impart typically some fun little heel sounds. So a buck basic would be something like this. So we replaced the rock step, right, with, with a little pitter patter of the heels. You're just working on isolating your heel and just whacking it on the floor. But you're going to be changing your weight back and forth very, very quickly in this case standing on the ball of your foot, and then just practicing hitting just the heel. So we're kind of like, this is happening, okay? To achieve that, if you're just gonna stand up on your toes like that, that's on the ball of your foot. You're well supported, but by doing that, you can get this really nice up and down motion, okay? Just by raising and lowering yourself. Um, a lot of calf action there, okay? So what I'm doing in this is basically being on the weighted leg is on the ball, and that allows me to hit the heel of the other. So when I change my weight, <laughs> so heel, so heel, so heel. So that's one way to introduce buck into your basics. You can also do it the opposite way by um, doing little toe pitter patters. Uh, and that looks entirely different. It's actually very, very cool. You will still be kind of jogging on the balls of your feet, but instead of whacking your heel, you're going to hit top of your toe. Okay. Oh, this is very, very important. This is why we use Steven Stompers, the taps. These, pardon, are called buck style jingle taps. Buck style for a reason. Um, the bottom plate here, there's a little piece of metal that comes up over the toe so that you can hit it, make a sound, and not destroy your shoe. Very, very, very important distinction, and it is for the purpose of these toe bucky things, okay? So, regular basic. Okay, so... tippity tappity extra little sounds that you can make with both your heels and your toe are fantastic little things that you can slip into your choreography and yes slip them into a basic to make your basic anything but hey what do you say we take a little trip up north to canada a eh? sorry guys i <laughs> love you now I am not an expert by any means of French Canadian step dancing. However, there is something called a Canadian basic that um, is a really nice addition to certain routines. Once again, especially when the tempo might slow down a little bit, there's more room to sneak in extra intricate sounds into your basics and into the routine. And the Canadian is a really, really interesting way to sneak it in there. Okay, so regular basic. 
Canadian basic. Whoa, I know. Learning a Canadian basic is, oh gosh, it is like the gateway to learning more contemporary style uh, clogging rhythms. Like French Canadian step dancing is maybe a little bit more akin to like Irish step dancing, which actually we'll touch on that briefly. But you're implementing different rhythms and mainly where it comes from is sneaking in extra doubles, okay, in the air. So rather than having your double and then taking a break by stepping and rocking, we're going to be doing doubles one after another in the air. When you're first learning this, you might need a chair or a wall. We need to really get used to being on the balls of our feet in order to um, control our height, control our lift, and get some little air. <laughs> Basically what's happening in Canadian, it's a double step, da, 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 da. double step, stay on the ball of your foot. Da, da. Okay, so just uh, shoot it out, flap it back, double step, da, da, and then up. Count is and a one e and a two and a three and a four. Double one e and a two. Double three e and a four. And I think that's right. <laughs> tricky but I just wanted to give you an idea of the flavor that you can dabble in from regular basics. So the last anything but basic variation that I wanted to show you today is really the Irish basic. I guess arguably Clogging's grandmommy I suppose. <laughs> It's another one very similar to Canadian where there are more doubles happening. Okay, so you're getting more beats stuffed in per measure. But it is another way to sneak in more beats when you have a very slow song that you're choreographing. It just looks really cool and it sounds really cool. But I will warn you, it feels weird and it can at first really kind of hurt your quads and your knees at first because whereas clogging is kind of um, focused out front. So when your doubles are out in front of you, Irish basics are backwards. They will usually start their uh, step with a stamp. They're going to stamp. And that's really hitting and catching that front heel and it makes a really, really nice, profound noise. So they start by stepping and then you're going to rock back. And right as that's happening, they're doing a, mm, the double's going backwards. Okay. So they usually start on their right foot is where we usually are on our left. So stamp back. Double top and plant it back down. Bam. One E and a two. It's hard to do it slow, guys, but let's try it on the other foot now. Bam. So now we can switch back and forth. And then just turn so you can see it for different angles. Stamp, rock, stamp. Again, so fast. This sounds really, really interesting.
want to begin in a basic, basic way without trying to be like all super Michael Flatley turned out, you know, arms of steel here. You can just keep it very basic um, and just work on getting the sound and staying just regular clogging way straight back and forth. You would just stamp, rock back, jump and down. Stamp. You'll see when you do your stamp, that's kind of a nice way to introduce a dynamic sound. And in your little hippity hopping, you can uh, try to keep yourself as upright as you can and work on getting a little bit of height in those bounces. It just makes a really, really nice up and down motion. Uh, there is one routine that one of my very dear friends, Karen, choreographed a long time ago to a song called E Flat Set by Natalie McMaster, little player. And uh, it definitely has a lending towards the Irish style. regular basics and blend in uh, some other styles and it really is really cool so I dare you to give that a shot most people in your audience they may pick up on those little subtle nuances and be like oh yeah that was cool that was Irish again I'm really more just a traditional type clogger um, but introducing some of those other little variations has really broadened my choreography and kind of uh, waking up some new muscles in my legs and in my feet helped me gain crispness and control in my double steps so i encourage you guys to try to do some of that as well if you liked what you saw and would like to learn more have any particular questions by all means like and put your comments down below well i hope you guys enjoyed this little mini series on clogging basic steps and i hope that you trust me now that the basic can be anything but basic. We talked about several different styles, uh, little different movements that you can change out in your regular basic to do a few things to make it look a little more interesting, a little more dynamic. In some cases, we were adding some sound by actually changing the way we moved our foot, like in the uh, example of the Bucky basics by adding in heel sounds, replacing just the basic rock step with either heel pitter patters or toe pitter patters, we actually added some sound. Uh, we can also change up the way that the doubles are done out front, like we did in the Canadian step version and in the Irish. Again, besides just making it look a little more energetic and dynamic and giving sound, it also opens up a world of possibilities when you have some slower songs that you um, that you're dancing to it adds some spice to your choreography and in some cases really accentuate the beat in your song a little better you can match the rhythms that are happening in the song like if you listen to the drums in there you'll give little clues where you know maybe they're adding some extra embellishments and that's really what they are they're just embellishments i urge you to practice some of these techniques Try uh, just waking up your muscles and getting used to how uh, they feel, learning how to control the different parts of your foot a little bit better, working on your balance and your posture with that, but really wake up those knees and quads. You'll see that bending, bending, bending is super, super, super crucial to all clogging. Uh, but this is a foundation stuff. So practicing that now will really help improve everything you do on all other steps that you learn and some of the Irish and Canadian type stuff is going to be again the gateway for taking you to more contemporary style clogging rhythms. So thank you so much for joining me guys. I just love doing this but please forgive me. This is uh, kind of new for me as far as teaching my channel. Not exactly new but getting into it like I am now is kind of new for me. So this is very rough around the edges, no frills, low budget. I hope that uh, the content is helpful to you, that you're enjoying it. Please comment down below and let me know what you are enjoying, uh, what you might need more clarification on, what else you'd like to see, what other questions you have. I really appreciate it. The parts that suck, I hope you'll be nice and not fresh and mean to me. <laughs> I am a human, okay? Um, and definitely, 
hitting the like really, 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 really helps a ton. And make sure to subscribe. That is huge. The YouTube overlords are really big on that and channels just absolutely cannot grow and thrive and let alone survive if you don't do your part just by hitting the subscribe button. We're in this together, guys. This channel is called Clog for Life for a reason. This is not just for the now. This is for us, for our whole life, and to pass on to future generations. So let's have fun and um, keep the love coming. And I will see you guys around next time. Thanks for watching and clog on, people. I'm all about the base, about the base. Sorry, Megan Trainer. I love you. Thank <laughs> you.